Welcome back, everyone, to the Risk Intel podcast, powered by SRA, where we share risk intelligence from experts across the banking industry. I'm your host, Ed Vincent, Executive Vice President at SRA. Welcome back to today's Risk Intel podcast. Today, I have Mike Jones with me. Mike's got a, a distinguished background in the compliance and fintech uh, arenas. Mike, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Ed. Mike is, uh, by means of a bit of background, Mike has been a uh, chief compliance officer at, at a fintech, right? You've also right, consulted for many years to, to banks in the compliance area. And today at, at SRA, you look after the fintech and compliance practices. And so we're going to pick your brain a little bit on this topic of why should a bank ad adopt a compliance risk maturity framework? So can you share a little bit of a, your perspective on that? Sure, Ed. The, the short answer is that uh, laws and regulations are constantly changing. Uh, they're complex. Uh, the products and services that banks and fintechs offer uh, are constantly changing due to growth, uh, market needs. Uh, not only that, but the clients uh, that, that the banks and fintechs serve are changing. And, and that all presents uh, compliance risk. The way you address compliance risk and prevent uh, an institution from violating a law or regulation, whether intentionally or unintentionally, is to have a robust compliance management system. The way you know, as an executive at a bank, if you have a robust compliance management system, is by doing a compliance risk maturity assessment using the risk maturity framework. Okay, so it sounds like then that 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 risk maturity framework is foundational, if you will. And on top of that, right, the rest of the program really builds from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, the, the risk maturity framework uh, is foundational for performing an assessment uh, that will then let you know how you stand up in certain areas, where your vulnerabilities are, uh, what risk improvement activities you might need to perform in order to improve your performance, reduce risk, adapt to the changing environment, so forth. Okay, so can you take me through then how someone would either develop their own risk maturity framework or kind of the, the process that you went through when, yeah. when you were involved in developing that risk, the compliance risk maturity framework uh, with SRA? One of the things we track really closely are supervisory trends. That is, you know, what are the regulators telling us they're seeing when they're out there looking at banks, fintechs, and other institutions. Um, that not only allows us to refine our products and services, but it allows us to advise our clients on where the emerging risks are yep. and how to deal with them. And we use that as the basis for our risk maturity framework. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Uh, the regulators are telling us there's continued scrutiny on UDAP, which is unfair, deceptive, or abusive acts or practices. Uh, that is a uh, clearly subject to a lot of interpretation by the regulators, yeah. uh, which increases the risk to uh, to clients, and it's very difficult to deal with simply because it can be so broadly interpreted. Um, and it's not just sales practices; it can be across an institution. Uh, how do you deal with UDAP risk? It, you have to have a robust compliance management system. And how do you know if your uh, compliance management system is robust enough? You look at, look at it through the risk maturity frame. Uh, another example, growth in asset size. Uh, regulators report that, uh, you know, that growth, uh, whether uh, through organic growth or mergers and acquisitions, uh, invites additional scrutiny. Uh, in fact, it's actually written into law in some cases, right? When uh, a, a bank surpasses certain asset thresholds, say $10 billion, mm -hmm. Uh, they come under enhanced scrutiny. In this case, scrutiny of the CFPB. Uh, again, it, it's that change, that dynamic environment uh, that that uh, that calls for a robust compliance management system. It has to be evaluated and reevaluated frequently. So it sounds like then, when when developing that risk maturity framework, right? There's the there's the regulatory perspective. Um, um, but it also sounds like there is a, a level of, of practicality that you have to look at, you know, what are, what are organizations doing? What have they done? What behaviors have they, have they exhibited? Um, 
Otherwise, this is academic. This needs to be practical here as well. Yeah, it's not sufficient just to understand the laws and regulations. It's really how they apply to your individual, your unique institution. Every institution is different uh, in terms of size, uh, skill level of their employees, products and services offered, geography, uh, the clients. It, it, different clients present different risk profiles. And so it, 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 you have to really understand the strategy of your bank, the products and services you offer, and who you serve in order to really adapt your risk maturity framework to, uh, to you in particular. All right, I'm gonna ask you kind of a, a pros and cons question here, which is right, if you utilize a robust, uh, to use your terminology, a robust compliance risk maturity framework, what does that get you? Um, and then conversely, if you are not if you do not have a, a robust compliance risk maturity framework in place that you're updating, whether it's annually or quarterly, whatever the period is, uh, what's the downside? So what, what's, what's the good and what's the, what's the bad? Yeah, so let's, let's go back to another one of these supervisory uh, trends. Um, it, you know, we're also hearing from regulators that uh, sort of there's this emergence of novel, previously unreported supervisory findings. Now, that'll make your hair stand on the back of your head, uh, back, back of your neck up if you're a CEO or a chief compliance officer or a chief risk officer at a bank, uh, because, you know, how do you identify that? Um, so, you know, again, the only way to do that is to have a tailored and, and, and robust compliance management system that you assess periodically. And how, how do you do that? And what does it get you to, to get to your question? Um, you know, we have a risk maturity framework that consists of eight, uh, we call them pillars, major topic areas that are tied specifically, not only to regulatory guidance, mm -hmm. the laws and regulations, but also the emerging trends in terms of how the regulators are actually applying their penalties, the restitution, uh, the fines that they impose, which can be quite severe in some cases. Um, you know, it starts with board management oversight, program policies and procedures, UDAP prevention, regulatory change management, and, and, and some other areas as well. Um, in all, these eight pillars cover what we call 28 risk attributes and 77 key risk indicators. Um, and it allows you as an institution to set your risk appetite according to your own uh, needs, according to your own uh, products and services, and the appetite of the institution. Um, and what you really get is a panoramic view of risk and the ability to continuously adapt if you, you, know, if, if you iteratively uh, assess yourself um, over time uh, to new and changing regulations, to uh, additional products and services, growth in size and, and changes in customer mix. Uh, the other side of that is if, if you don't do this, you know, you, you risk exposing yourself. Uh, it, it, and it could be not even due to something under your control, a change in the environment, a new regulation, right. simply the change in the focus of the regulators in terms of what they decide to enforce yeah. and what they don't, which changes over time. Uh, so it's really a safeguard against those sort of risks. It sounds like then there is a significant amount of depth, right? You mentioned 77 key risk indicators, right? You're going down to a, a very specific level. Um, there's also a level of personalization that goes into this by being able to intersect your risk appetite as an organization, which is going to be unique to your business practices, to, to these best practices. So um, it really, it really the, um, the upshot of this is that getting, getting a robust risk maturity framework in place is the foundation for that um, compliance risk uh, risk management program? Absolutely, and and you know, it, it's challenging if you're a bank executive and you have a budget, a dollar to spend. You're not always going to want to spend it on compliance. There, you know, CEOs have many more competing priorities uh, that are that are you know more or less obvious. Um, so, investing wisely. Uh, take into account that, uh, you know, different levels of skills within your compliance department, within your first and second and third lines of defense, uh, what, what our risk maturity framework allows you to do is sort of multiply the capability of the chief compliance officer. It allows your institution to assess your compliance management system really through the eyes 
of a regulator and address issues with a plan and a timeline before they become enforcement actions. Terrific. Well, Mike, thank you very much for your time. This is clearly a hot topic, and we're uh, excited that you're able to join us today. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you.